Hi guys, my name is Joe. Um, it's great to be back with Threads to talk a little bit about um, some of my essentials for um, a keyboard rig. So if you are looking to get a new keyboard at your church or you're looking to get um, a keyboard for home practice or upgrading the one you already have, then hopefully I'll be able to provide a little bit of um, guidance with that. So I'll dig right in. Um, my first essential, I guess, for um, looking for a keyboard that would be suitable for using at church or at home for practice would be um, a good key bed. So number one, it has um, velocity sensitivity. That means um, it is sensitive to how hard or how soft you play. So that allows for more expression and it's, it's like a real piano would do. Like you can play softly or you can play loudly. And it's that kind of expression that you are able to bring to the table. And I think as a part of a worship collective, you want to be able to express yourself musically. And I believe that that is one of the really big things for a keyboard player that is, enables you to express. So velocity sensitivity, that's a must as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then one of the things you'll come across is what type of action. So. Um, the kind of the weight of the key that you press. Um, so you have lots of different varieties. You can have synth action, you can have semi-weighted action, you can have full weighted and hammer action. So um, I guess this isn't so essential. You can probably get away with um, playing with like a semi-weighted keyboard. My other rig is a semi-weighted keyboard. Um, here we've got a, a fully weighted hammer action. So that's like, the keys um, imitate the, the weight of the hammers of an actual piano. Um, and that feels most realistic. And so if you're a piano player coming into playing a keyboard at church, then this would probably be most comfortable for you. Um, so again, if you're looking to get a keyboard rig or upgrade your keyboard rig, that would probably be what you want to aim for, that hammer action feel. Yeah. So then finally, you might want to look at a number, the number of keys that you have. So here we have an 88 key keyboard. So a piano has 88 keys, um, but you can get keyboards that um, have 72 or 71 or something or 61. Um, and obviously the fewer keys, the cheaper it will be. So um, definitely if you have a limited budget, then you can perhaps cut the number of keys because I don't often play up here so you can cut down to maybe like a 61 key keyboard um, if that's what your budget um, requires but that's another consideration that you need to think about the next consideration I'd say is the ability to layer patches so this is I feel quite important um, because sometimes a piano on its own can feel quite limiting or limited or um, it's not necessarily enough So most modern worship keyboard players will layer the sound with a pad. Um, I've got mine here. And so that's a really helpful thing to do. And so you can get quite um, affordable keyboards that are able to layer sounds. Um, sometimes you might have to like hold two buttons down and then it will allow you to do that. Sometimes it's more like this keyboard here where you can assign things to sliders and then have um, the sound layered together and you can uh, change the volume on the fly, which is really helpful. Um, so I think that's the next um, essential thing that I would say. You need and then finally you might want to look at the sound quality particularly if you're upgrading from a, a more affordable keyboard rig to a more expensive one you want to think about the sound quality so um, a lot of these um, digital pianos they use modeling to generate the sound so they'll model the sound um, through like digital algorithms to produce a sound that sounds like um, a piano some use more, more the expensive ones will use samples. So, you know, you put a microphone to a piano and you press a note and then when you press a note here, it sounds like that, except that doesn't sound like a piano at all. 
yeah, it's more expensive keyboards will have better um, samples and will sound more realistic. And so if you want to go up and upgrade in how it sounds, if your current keyboard sounds a bit tacky, sounds a bit old, um, then you might want to look at getting something by Roland, something by Yamaha, something by Kawai. Um, if you have a lot of money, something by Nord, to get those um, more high-end um, piano samples that sound more realistic. But that's not the only route, so that's like a hardware route. Um, but you could go another way, you could go the software route. So that's something that I do myself personally. Um, I use MainStage, um, but if you don't have a Mac, and I'll come on to MainStage in just a sec. If you just have a uh, Windows computer that has maybe eight gig of RAM or, or higher, um, then you could definitely get um, something called Ableton, which is a piece of software um, that allows you to pull up um, piano patches or whatever, and you can play using that. It's as simple uh, as this. So I've got Ableton over here, um, and I can pull in a piano, and this will allow me to play a piano sound. So that's, that's as simple as that. And so Ableton, you can get on whether you have a MacBook or whether you have a um, Windows computer. Um, and you can get the entry level one for perhaps, I think, um, 70 pounds. Or you can get a, a free version of Ableton which comes free with a lot of products, a lot of MIDI controllers, and a lot of audio interfaces. Um, and on that note, an audio interface is something that will come in very useful if you're going for the software route. So I've got a little red box, I don't know if you can see it over here, um, that will act as the audio sound card. So it will turn the digital signal into an audio one that you can play through a speaker. Um, and you will probably need one of those if you're going to go the software route. Um, because the sound card in your laptop is probably not as good as this dedicated one would be in its audio interface. So if you get one of these audio interfaces, maybe by Focusrite or something like that, um, often they come with a free version of Ableton or free version of any other digital audio workstation that you can pull up a piano patch in um, and then you can play that. So that's a really good option. Um, if you happen to have an Apple MacBook, uh, something like that, uh, then you could go for main stage. Main stage just costs, I think, £30. If you already have a MacBook, um, then it's not that much of an additional cost. Um, and then you can, you can play. Again, you can have um, pianos and pads, and you can pull them all in, and you can play that way. Um, it's a very, very good investment to go the software route, primarily because there are lots of third-party developers of um, software like pianos and synths, and so you can massively broaden your sound with them. Um, it can cost a little more. Um, the more, like, so I have a piano sample that cost me forty pounds, and that was half price. So they can get ridiculously expensive, but the return is actually great so the, the, it sounds like the real thing essentially um, it's if you're thinking of upgrading and you don't have a macbook and you want to just go dive right in then that would be a big investment but if you're willing to make that then that's great i i would recommend personally if you already have a macbook then main stage is an easier addition if you don't then you and you have a different type of um, laptop but as long as it can have the processing power, then I definitely recommend getting something like Ableton to start you out on the software route if that's what you're interested in. So some other considerations that you might want to look into um, is whether you need a keyboard that has speakers or whether it'll be fine to have one that has a line output, um, either jack or XLR. Um, so if you're in a smaller setting and you tend to have meetings in a small room, then maybe a keyboard with speakers would be great for you. Um, they tend to be the more affordable ones, more like around one or two hundred pounds. They would tend to have um, speakers on the front. Um, otherwise, the more high-end keyboards will have a jack out or XLR out, and uh, you might want to check uh, what your keyboard has to offer and what your sound desk might need. Um, those are things to consider. Uh, another thing to consider is the ease of use. So perhaps your 
might be upgrading your keyboard rig and you have maybe one or two keyboard players who um, play now and again at church, they won't have necessarily the time to get very in-depth and very um, to, related to the, the keyboard that they're going to be working with and they might have to turn up on a Sunday uh, and just have to pull up the patch that they will work with. So you want it to be quite easy and familiar to use. So if you have something that has like loads of knobs and loads of sliders, that might be quite tricky and it might require some training. Um, but if you have something quite simple, you press a couple of buttons and you have the, a pad and a piano, then that's great as well. Also, if you're going for the software route, then that will definitely need some training because it can get quite complex very quickly uh, when you're looking at that. Finally, um, if you're upgrading your keyboard or buying a keyboard, then it's definitely good to think about a stand. Um, my recommendation would just be a double X brace stand. Uh, they seem to do the job, they can hold pretty much anything. Um, so yeah, and they're quite portable as well. So I think that'll be all. So those are my considerations for upgrading or buying a new keyboard rig for your church or for home practice. And I, I hope that's been helpful for you. Thanks a lot. Uh, one more thing for you. Um, I just forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, we'll be releasing a free main stage patch along with this video. So if you're thinking about going for the software route, then you can look below and find a link to a main stage patch. We'll have a piano and pad and it will have some effects and all you will need is a main stage. You won't need any third party plugins or anything like that. Um, and that will be a great start and a great helper for you um, to start your journey on the, the uh, software route. So that's our gift to you and we hope that it blesses you.